and the name of the chapter is constitutional design. Well, in the previous chapters, we have seen that most of the countries in the world today have picked up the popular government democracy. But we know that the rulers in these democracies do not have the power to rule the way they want to. That is, it has been restricted to see that they do not become dictators. So, what are those guidelines which give instructions to these rulers as to how to rule, for how many years to rule, who will elect them and what are their powers and limitations. These are the various questions which have to be answered in almost all democracies. The answers could vary from one country to another that is the term of the government or the powers that the ruler enjoys and what is the name given to the ruler and how exactly is he going to rule the people. But before we start with the chapter, that is before we know the book, the guideline which is called as constitution in detail, let me talk about the new terms and concepts. The first is the constitution. The term constitution means a legal framework which gives in black and white all the details as to what the ruler is, how is he going to rule, how the people can participate in the government and what are the limitations of the ruler. So, constitution in fact is that book which describes in detail about each and every part of the rulers and the ruled. Next is amendment. Amendment that is when you make a change or modification in the constitution, it is called as amendment. The amendments are required every now and then because the times are changing, the circumstances are changing, the needs and aspirations of the people are changing. So, we need to update the constitution every now and then and this can be done only through amendment that is the change, the alteration, the modification. Of course, the amendment in various countries can be done by different ways depending upon what their constitution has legalized. Next is preamble. Every constitution has a preamble that is an introduction to the constitution which clearly tells as to what is there in the constitution. If I talk about the Indian constitution preamble it says we are sovereign socialist secular democratic republic. So, this all indicates all these words exactly what our nation is. Next is republic. Republic is that country where the head of the state is elected and is not a hereditary ruler. That is when we elect the head of the state, it is the republican government. Next is secular. Secular is that state, that country wherein the country has no religion as the official religion and all the religions are given equal status and all people of various religions can enjoy all the powers. But secularism should not be taken as something wherein no religion exists. Of course, religions are there, but religions have equal status and footing. Next is universal adult franchise. When all the people of the country 
irrespective of all the differences enjoy one vote that is voting right it's called as universal adult franchise the age could vary from 18 to 21 or more than that but it just means all adults enjoy this right next is apartheid apartheid means segregation of the people on the basis of the color that is this was mostly practiced in south africa by the whites when they differentiated when they oppressed when they separated the native blacks because of their skin color is called as apartheid they were not allowed to go to the same church they were not allowed to visit the same restaurants they were not allowed to shop from the same place that's called as apartheid and next is treason treason is when you overthrow the present government that's called as treason against the state now let's try and understand about the few famous personalities of india and south africa the first is nelson mandela nelson mandela was the most active member in the african national movement he was put behind bars because of the apartheid policy and was released in the year 1990 later on in 1994 he became the first black president of south africa a great man who played a mighty role in getting independence to south africa next is abul kalam azad abul kalam azad was an educationist a theologian a person who was much against the communalism that was there at that time and he became the first education minister in the first union cabinet of free india next dr rajendra prasad dr rajendra prasad he was a lawyer by profession and is the first president of free india who had two terms and he wrote books like at the feet of mahatma gandhi and india undivided next is b r ambedkar b r ambedkar a champion of the rights of the underprivileged he was the chairman of the drafting committee of the constitution and he in fact saw to it that all the rights come to all the people irrespective of all the caste and the injustice that had been prevalent in india since ages next is shama prasad mukherjee shama prasad mukherjee very active in the hindu mahasabha and later on he became the founder of the bharatiya jan sangh next jawarlal nehru jawarlal nehru the son of motilal nehru very active in the indian independence movement and the first prime minister of india a great dynamic personality i have fought against the white domination i have fought against the black domination and i look for a society which is democratic in nature and wherein people live in harmony with each other i cherish the idea where everyone is equal and i'm looking forward to such a society and i'm prepared to die if required to bring about such a change in the country 
these are the words of nelson mandela nelson mandela the man behind the freedom struggle of south africa was put behind bars that is given a life imprisonment punishment for the act of treason in the year 1964 for the next 28 years and in the worst of the cell that they had that is at robin island this is how nelson mandela suffered struggled worked hard towards achieving independence of south africa now in south africa the whites that is the people who had settled there followed the policy of apartheid that is segregation of the blacks they were not given any voting right they could not go to the clubs they could not go to the restaurants they could not go to the cinema halls they could not even go to the same church where the whites worshiped and the whites had actually captured this place by the use of arms and force so such were the harsh conditions of the inhabitants of south africa wherein the white settlers had become the rulers of that country little different from what it was in india because in india these people actually came and settled down but did not continue for a long as rulers in south africa there were three categories of races the blacks the whites and the colored the blacks were the original inhabitants of south africa the whites were those settlers who had come from outside to trade and then became the rulers and the colored were those from asia like india now restrictions were there on all the non whites and nobody had the right to stand in equal to the whites who became the masters the rulers but the struggle started by 1950 and the african national congress started protesting against the segregation which was there of the blacks they demanded for equal rights they demanded for humanity they demanded for being treated as human beings it was just not the blacks but also various intelligent whites who started joining hands with the blacks to give them those rights other countries of the world also gave a sympathetic approach and they too lent their hand as far as giving them as far as getting them rights was concerned so that was the condition of south africa when nelson mandela was the leader or at the helm of affairs was jailed was given life imprisonment was released later on to become the first president of the south africa in fact the first black president slowly the white government in south africa realized that it was not easy to suppress the popular demand of the people wherein they were looking for equality and justice therefore they had to make certain changes like all the discriminatory laws were repealed and people were to get justice and equality well on the midnight of 26th april 1994 South Africa unfurled the first 
free flag of South Africa. And the country became a multi-racial government. Well, independence was achieved. But was it easy for the people living there to trust each other, to forgive each other, to see that the future is bright and sparkling? Now, the whites wanted to see that if there is a majority rule, it does not become an oppressed rule. And the blacks had to have a big heart and they had to forgive the white rulers of all the wrongs and the injustice that they had done in the past. Well, they sat together and made a common constitution in which they decided that everybody will have equal rights, will be treated as equal, they shall, they should nobody be treated as high or low, everybody should be equal in the eyes of the law and thus came out the finest constitution of the world as they call it. So, this country became a model of democracy the most undemocratic country in the past, wherein the people had been treated in the most torturous manner, where there was nothing as what we can call as being savage, was now being treated as people of equal rights, a true democracy, a model of new democracy. Now, why do we need a constitution? That is one question which everybody keeps asking. Now, we need to have a constitution when we look at the country like South Africa first of all, because the trust of the people has to be maintained. If there are people who are looking for protection, like the whites as I spoke of just now, and they wanted to safeguard their properties and the blacks had to forgive their past masters, we need to have a constitution, a written document, written laws and guidelines. Well, everybody gets the right to vote, that is one vote and this is the majority role, the majority rule which comes forward should not become an absolute power. Meaning to say, when one community becomes the ruler, it should not try and obstruct the feelings and development of the other community. The other community should have all the right to come to power next time. Everybody should be equal. There should be no division on the basis of color, caste, creed or any other difference. And for all this to be put in black and white, we need to have a proper book which is called as the constitution. So, all the democracies have a constitution wherein they tell their ruler how they are going to rule their people. We must know that here of course in South Africa the problem was of the white rulers, that is the faith which they did not have the communities living there. But all countries have had some or the other problem. It could be that there are discriminations within the societies, discrimination on the basis of the social, economic or religious status or there have been oppressed and depressed communities or there have been people asking for votes or a particular community or as I can call it a particular sex that is the females demanding for voting right. So, there have been problems and problems in all the countries. 
who is going to solve all of them who is going to give that faith to the people who is going to write it as to what is exactly what the people are looking forward to and that is why we need a proper constitution now we've understood that the constitution is required for basically four main purposes the first is constitution when it is written in black and white gives lot of trust and coordination amongst the people the second thing is that the constitution lays down as to how the government has to be constituted that is how the elections are going to be held what are the political parties which are going to be there and what are the other aspects then it also sees to it that the ruler does not become autocratic therefore constitution helps in limiting the powers of the ruler besides the ideas aspirations and hopes of the people are expressed in the constitution which in fact helps the ruler and the ruled too because they know exactly what they are wanting from the ruler and the ruler knows what he is supposed to give his subjects but now let's move on to the indian constitution if making the south african constitution was a difficult process even in india the making of the constitution was not that easy there were three big problems that the country faced at that time the first was that the country was partitioned at that time the people had been divided and there was lot of blood shed the people had not forgotten the sufferings so to reconcile them to bring about that unity and faith and hopes of the people back was not that easy so there was required such a constitution which would actually heal all the past wounds then there was another major problem of the 560 princely states that is those states of india which were given the free right to either join india or pakistan it was not easy to make them understand that they are not going to be safe and they cannot actually run on their own and to bring them under the indian umbrella all the efforts were made by vallabhbhai patel but these princely states when they joined the indian state that is the indian government they had their own hopes aspirations so the constitution had to actually satisfy these princely states also who had joined india and they had their own hopes besides the constitution had to ensure that all the people got social and economic rights justice and equality so these were the three big problems that the makers of the indian constitution had there in front of them while framing the indian constitution of course there was one big thing that is like the south african constitution makers the indian constitution makers knew clearly what they want because the freedom struggle had taught the indians one thing clearly that they were looking for democratic ideals that is equality liberty fraternity and therefore it was easy to actually make the constitution on the basis of these liberty equality and fraternity the making of the indian constitution also went step by step 
The first in fact that we can remember is in 1928 when Motilal Nehru and seven other leaders joined hands to frame a kind of constitution for India. Followed by in 1931 at the Karachi session wherein they said that they are going to have a democratic constitution for India. And in 1935 the government of India act which clearly gave India the vision of the future government. The constitution of India which was based on the ideals of the British constitution. So, we had some things already in mind before we framed the constitution for free India. Now, we must understand that the Indian constitution was framed by the constituent assembly of India and the chairperson was B. R. Ambedkar who made a great effort in actually framing a wonderful constitution for India. Now why should we accept the constitution which was made so many years back even today? Now we must understand that it was not the work of one individual. It was the work of a board, a member who actually understood the people of India, who understood the problems of India, who understood as to what the aspirations, hopes and aims of the people of India are. So they were well versed in the soil of India and whatever they wrote is even justified by the people even today. The constituent assembly at that time represented all these sections of the people that is various groups constituted the constituent assembly. It was not just the rich or the poor or the untouchables or the high class or the rurals or the urbans. People from all walks of life had their equal representation in the constituent assembly. So there is an equal space, equal aspiration hopes which have been fulfilled of the various people of India. Then the constitution was also written in a very systematic manner. It was done in a very democratic manner, in a very systematic manner. Therefore, whatever the constituent assembly wrote at that time is valid even today because they were the people who were there in and out of India. Of course, various changes, modifications, amendments to the constitution are made every now and then, but that is just making the changes as and when required, but nothing to change the legal framework of the constitution. Now the philosophy behind the framing of the constitution was very simple that is the people were inspired the, by the values of freedom struggle, liberty, equality wherein they were looking for all kinds of sharing power. The preamble of the constitution says it all and it says we the people of India are Soviet, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Let us try and understand the each word in detail what the preamble says. Soviet. Soviet means that the country is free to make all its internal and external decisions. There is no power which can restrict us in making any policy that we feel like. Socialist. Socialist that is the entire wealth of India shall be divided equally amongst its people. All the power generating or wealth generating sections shall be in the hands of the government. Secular. Secular where all the 
religions are treated equal and the state does not have any religion of its own. Democratic, a government of the people, by the people, for the people. That is democracy. Republic, when the head of the state is elected by the people and is not a hereditary ruler, is a republic. So, just understand that the preamble of the constitution of India says it all what the constitution of India is all about. Soviet, socialist, secular, democratic republic. To sum up the chapter, we must understand that a constitution of course is a very important document, but according to the change in time, aspirations and hopes, there could be a need to change various parts of the constitution or clauses of the constitution. And on the basis of how we can make the amendment, a constitution is referred to as rigid or flexible. The Indian constitution is neither rigid nor flexible. And for this, we have to see that the amendment in the Indian constitution is not so easy as the amendment can be done in Britain or so difficult as in US. That is, it follows a middle path. It is neither rigid nor flexible. Some provisions like the federal provisions of the constitution cannot be amended easily. Like the division of the powers between the central and the state government. So, there it has a rigid feature. Well, for making any amendment, it has to be passed by two-third members of the parliament and then ratified by half of the states and then it is sent to the president for signature. This is the procedure of making amendment in India. So, it is not as easy as in Britain wherein they just sit down and make any amendment at any point of time and they say that the British parliament can make any changes except that they cannot change a man into a woman. That is, it is so easy to amend there. And amendment in the Indian constitution can be initiated only in the union parliament and not in the state parliaments. So, by all this we have understood that it is the best kind of the constitution that one can think of because it is neither rigid nor flexible, it follows the middle path. The constitution was made by the constituent assembly who was well versed in the ideas, hopes, aspirations, the ground realities of India and they had learnt lot of things from the freedom struggle and they had a set standard set by the British Parliament which came in the form of the Government of India Act 1935. So, that was all about your chapter, the third chapter of Political Science Class 9.